Hello and welcome back to our operating system and virtual memory module. So far we have figured out how do virtual memory systems work and we have seen the role of translation locusite buffers or TLBs in accelerating this translation from virtual addresses to physical addresses. All what is left now is to just implement that in our pipeline. So let's do that. So it actually could be left as an exercise to the listener, but we are nevertheless go ahead and walk through the implementation. So here is our five stage pipeline that we have seen before. We obviously see one uh, modification that is in here. It is insertion of two TLBs in front of the instruction cache and the data cache because we remember that TLBs need to precede the cache. Our program counter is going to issue virtual addresses. TLB is going to translate these virtual addresses into the physical addresses before they go into the cache. Similarly, our data memory references are going to be virtual before they reach the TLB. TLB is going to translate them to the physical ones. Now, there are several events that these TLBs also need to um, alert us to. Whether we had a TLB miss, was there a page fault, and is there a protection violation? So, how do we handle those? First, let's take a look at TLB misses. Handling a TLB miss needs a hardware or software mechanism to essentially walk the page tables and update the TLB. In most current machines, it is done in hardware and it can be done fairly quickly. It's essentially what we are looking at is uh, an implementation on a, of a straightforward, perhaps not so simple uh, state machine that is going to do that. On the other hand, handling a page fault needs a precise trap and we have seen how we implement those. So if there is a if, if there is a page fault, we need to stop that um, and cancel that load or store instruction because it is going to take forever. So we will perform a precise trap, cancel it, and call the operating system. Operating system will do something else, most likely a context switch. So once when uh, the that the page is available in DRAM will resume execution from exact that same instruction. Finally, if there is a protection violation, generally OS needs to know about that and <clears throat> would typically abort the current process that made a protection violation. Okay. Let's take a look a bit at the practical implementation here. So we can take our standard five stage pipeline that we have already worked with. And what we need to do is add our TLBs. Now, one thing to notice here is uh, we have added a memory controller. Memory controller works with the two caches, the instruction cache and the data cache. It is essentially um, a digital, a, a chunk of digital logic that translates things from the processor speak to the DRAM speak. So it is a pretty large digital system that essentially knows how to work with the DRAM, knows how to refresh it, uh, knows how to uh, issue reads and writes and how to do bursts and so on. This is not something that we are going to cover in uh, 61C or actually anywhere in our curriculum. This is something that uh, commonly is a piece of IP, intellectual property, that you buy on the market to integrate in your product. Unless you're a really big company that has their own uh, memory controllers. Okay, but the things that do need to exist in our processor uh, is the support for handling page misses. So if there is a 
miss in a TLB what we need to do is we need to walk the page tables and that is typically done as a hardware state machine um, it starts uh, from the page table base register that is set for every process that is being executed and page wa table walker goes and updates the TLBs as we have seen we essentially see in the process of that when that is done correctly we see a translation from virtual addresses to the physical addresses at appropriate locations a um, few other things we basically need to signal if we have an encounter a page fault or protection violation either in the instructions or in the data TLP okay so that's basically it to put it all together here is how does Andres translation look like in a practical system and we are outlining here things that are done in hardware or in software or can be done in either of those most of the, the time nowadays these things are done in hardware that can be done either in hardware and software um, that's why we made them more like these lime greenish than orangish so when we start with a virtual address we're going to go through a TLB lockup most of the time 99.9 .9 something time we're going to have a hit if you have a hit we need to check those bits that are in in our TLB and whether we are permitted to do the the operation that we wanted to do read write or execute if we are we issue a physical address um, and that goes to the cache and we proceed further if we are denied we have a protection fault that is handled in software by the operating system and generally the user sees a segfault error now going back to a TLB lockup if we have a TLB miss we need to perform a page table walk that can be done in software or hardware but generally now is done in hardware and if the page is in the memory we'll update the TLB and carry on that happens quickly a few clock cycles and we're good if the page is not in the memory it's in the disk we are going to issue a page fault so and let OS load the page and do something else in the meantime while that page is coming from the disk and that's it so a few other summary points here modern virtual memory systems are there to provide an illusion of a large private uniform store and we have seen how we do that how many of these mechanisms go together to make sure that the data always looks like it's right there that is within one cycle even though it could be on on pluto um, so we are you know there are several other things that are implementing along implemented along the way protection and privacy that several um, users and processes can coexist on a processor and each one of them is going to have their private address space we do that through dem demand paging that provides the ability to run programs larger than the primary memory and that is also very useful because it hi hides differences in machine configurations people can have different hardware and still run the same software <coughs> the price for doing that is in the memory translation and what we do we use TLBs to accelerate that and they work seamlessly with the caches to make our machines look like they're infinitely fast and work with infinitely large memory <clears throat> finally now we actually know how to define what is happening in a context switch so how does a processor run many programs at once it uses context switches they're typically set by the timer or by could be done by some external event like a page fault that on the context switch the operating system is going to change the internal state of a processor 
to switch between the processes. It has to save all the registers, including the PC, and change that value in the supervisor table base register, <coughs> or that SPTBR, such that we can point to a different set of page tables. What happens to the TLB? Well, it's invalid. It corresponds to the old process, so it needs to be updated. And that's it. After this, we're going to evaluate the performance of our virtual memory system and wrap up with a module. Move after that to I.O. See you after our quick break.